This is one very interesting and awesome case in which there are so many things to learn. And this is the cataract which is hypermature Morganian type where we can see the cortex has liquefied and the nucleus has gravitated down which is appearing as a brown element in the inferior part of the pupil. This is the place where we have started the surgery. The clear corneal incision is being made. And now the nucleus which is at the bottom of the capsule patient lying supine the nucleus is not visible injecting trypan blue dye to stain the capsule because in these capsules or cataracts there is no glow so the capsule cannot be visualized until and unless it is properly stained so once you have stained the capsule we inject viscoelastic to inflate the anterior chamber and to deepen it once that has been done. We attempt a flap creation using a capsular excess forceps. The surprising thing is that after making a nick in the capsule, the cortex should have been leaked out. But this is not the scenario. In spite of creating this flap and propagating it, the cortex is, is still there. It should have leaked out profusely as happens in the hypermature Morganian type. And this element shows that this is a lamellar capsule that is there are two lamella the superficial one which has been stained and the deeper one which is yet intact and needs correction and this is known as true exfoliation syndrome and this is a unique situation which was presented here and i was not prepared for it however once recognizing that this is a lamellar capsule i proceeded to make a nick in the capsule again so that we have the nick in the capsule which is deeper down and once it happened we can see the cortex has leaked out which should have been the scenario in a normal situation let's look at this in a slow motion we can appreciate that there is an overlying capsular excess which is stained by trap and blue dye and that is the superficial lamella and once we nick the deeper lamella, we can see the liquefied cortex leaking out. This is true exfoliation syndrome. And this is seen in situation where the patients are exposed to a very high temperature environment and this capsule can get split. Now because the deeper layer is not properly stained, it is impossible to see and tear it. So the better approach is to use a one hour scissor, recognize the initial nick and make a prominent cut in the capsule using that one hour scissor. Once the cut has been made, we can recognize the flap and hold it and try to tear it. I was fortunate enough that in spite of so much of macrobatics, the rexis was performed satisfactorily and even I could revise or spiral out the rexis in the place where it was apparently small. So these capsules are loose, they are at times calcified, but however the excess was satisfactorily done. Once the cortex has leaked out, we can now see that brown nucleus making a side port and proceeding for phaco emulsification. Now watch, because this bag is empty, so there is so much room for the nucleus to float around. And here we can see the difference between the pulse mode phaco and the micro pulse mode phaco. See, when the phaco is applied, the nucleus simply is rippled back or away from the phaco tip. And this causes a problem because I was unable to hold the nucleus at the proper desired place. Wherever I wanted the nucleus to be buried, when I applied power, the nucleus simply vibrated and turned away. And that causes me, caused me to not having a good grip on the nucleus because this is the peripheral part where you don't want to bury too deep and the nucleus is also tilted. So this was a little difficult till the moment I realized that if I can switch to micro pulse mode the repulsing power of the phaco machine or the phaco tip will be neutralized and then the job became easier. And you can easily appreciate the point where this happens. The moment I switch to the micro pulse mode the pieces are no longer getting repelled, rather they are getting attracted. So this confirms my belief that using a micro pulse mode phaco 
when the nuclear pieces have been broken into smaller pieces and being emulsified if you use micropulse mode the pieces will come and follow you for the emulsification process if you keep on using continuous or pulse mode it will repel the pieces and that will not allow you to have that magnetic flow so that the pieces are coming directly into the phaco tip this is a free piece so it is floating around and we can demonstrate this phenomena once we have emulsified the nucleus we have also take care that because the pupil is getting small the iris should not be damaged so we have to have perform everything at the center of the pupil and also keep a watch so that the iris is not caught once the phaco emulsification process is done proceeding to implanting a intraocular lens and this is a foldable single piece monofocal iol iol has gone into the bag and we can see the pupil has become very small however this is not a concern at this moment because majority of the work which requires a well dilated pupil has been finished dialing this iol in place so that it goes both the haptic and the optic go into the back the pupil is very small and then removing the remaining viscoelastic gel there is no cortex left behind there is no cortex actually ever which needed aspiration it was all liquefied cortex which was easily removed however this we can see there is a small hidden piece of nucleus which has come and blocked the irrigation aspiration port and for this it is best to simply chop and stuff this into the aspiration port of the irrigation aspiration cannula though the port is small but this these small pieces can be consumed without phaco power if they are stuffed into the aspiration port so this was an interesting case and this was a rare situation which has been described in textbooks as a true exfoliation syndrome in contrast to a pseudo exfoliation syndrome in which you just have a powdery deposit on the surface of the capsule the anterior chamber is formed and the case is closed thank you